Hey there and welcome or welcome back to our channel. On this channel we talk about mental health with a special focus on how mental illness affects us as the DID system. I am Shell, I am the host of our DID system and I have with me today our sister Nikki. And our son is homesick from school so if you hear coughing in the background that's what it is. He's fine, he's just got a cough that sounds worse than it really is. So I have my sister here today. She also has dissociative identity disorder, and I thought it would be interesting to look at how our systems differ from each other, seeing as we are sisters. Um, so she was kind enough to agree to come, and we're gonna do a little question and answer session. Um, now, one thing I do wanna say is that Nikki is not in the, um, DID online community. So if she uses terms that you wouldn't necessarily use for your system, it is what she is referring to her own system. And as always, when we talk about our experiences, that is what we experience. Not everybody with DID is going to have the same experience. So um, just uh, do you want to tell a little bit about yourself? Well, uh, <laughs> what could I say? Uh, I'm obviously, as you see the, the video for guests, I'm quite different from my sister. <laughs> Not j like just our systems being different alone, but our personalities do not <laughs> match. But it's one of those um, situations where it's actually better. <laughs> we get along having grown up and having so different and her being such an important part in my life it, it is very helpful to finally have someone else <laughs> the same issue to talk to with in the family it's quite different from having somebody outside of the family and i don't feel like i have to keep it to myself like i used to and um to put into context, we did grow up together. Um, I am like three years older. Um, out of our first set of siblings, um, the siblings that have the same mom and dad, I am the oldest and Nikki is the youngest. Um, and so we do also have like that um, difference in birth order. And I think that also plays a role into how our systems are different from each other. Um, so Nikki, when did you first find out that you had other personalities? Oh, uh, that's a complex question, <laughs> actually. Um, I first realized officially that I had it, like I got diagnosed in high school, but personalities came forth before that I didn't exactly fully how, know how to handle. I just knew like, I was having blackouts and people would tell me, oh my God, you did this, you did that. I don't even remember. Um, and when I, it was only when I started to see my therapist at the time that he discovered he was talking to me, but then at other times talking to one of my altars, which at the time there were only two altars known of, which were Nancy and Nikki. And unfortunately, um, he dealt with Nikki <laughs> and I'll go into more details about Nikki later, but yeah. So you actually had a diagnosis in high school. Yes. I didn't know that. Um, yeah, we talked about it, but it was never put in our, and he never put it in the file for some odd reason. Yeah. So that's interesting actually. So that's, um, news to me. Um, sorry. <laughs> Probably should have given that news to you a while ago. <laughs> but no, it is interesting because so that's um, a huge difference is that you found out about your alters when you were in high school. Whereas just I, a couple. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't find out about any of it until I was a full grown adult with a family. Um, so for me, the way that I found out about my system and I've told this story before, um, but I had always grown up with what I thought were imaginary friends and I would keep it to myself because I was like, I'm too old to have imaginary friends, but they wouldn't go away. They would talk to me. I couldn't control the things that they said. And I would have these moments where I didn't feel like I was in control of my body. 
and I also have a terrible memory, but I didn't know that all of these things were connected until one day when um, I was walking my dog and I had been going back and forth and thinking about finally telling my therapist about these um, imaginary friends because I thought that what I had was maladaptive daydreaming and I wanted to bring it up to her. And while walking my dog, a voice that I had never heard before and would later find out was Ricky was yelling at me and saying, um, no, you don't need to go down this path. Don't worry about it. Don't even look into this. Don't go any further. Like very much wanted me to not open that can of worms, which had the opposite effect because as soon as I heard him yelling at me about that, I was like, um, this isn't normal and I don't know this voice, um, which made me even more concerned. And then that evening, Cameron, Megumi, Mary, and Ricky all came together and had this um, argument. And I'm watching as I am seeing different people take control of my body and I have no control. And I'm watching as all of this is happening and I ran to my therapist and that's when, cause we had decided that it was gonna be either schizophrenia or DID and based on my history and the experience that I told her about, she was like, this is most likely DID and got me to a specialist. Um, so it's very interesting. So you've been living with the knowledge of having a system for a lot longer. Yeah, I just kept it to myself at the time that I told you, it was only Sammy and Alana who knew. Only because Sammy had a system, has a system herself, and well, a lot has just known since elementary, so it's like, you know, she, she's learned to adapt and communicate with each one of them, um, which is very helpful for me because since they knew what was going on, they were the ones I could mostly rely upon if somebody came out. Because unfortunately, unlike you. <laughs> I am not seeing anything. I'm kind of like in this dark room where I have no recollection of what's going on. So when I come back out, I'm like, if I'm in a different location from where I left, I'm like, where am I? What's going on? Why is the scenery different? You know, and, and it's like, but again, because that's the case, I end up losing that good portion of my time. And I don't know what's going on. So I, having not known anybody else in the family, I just thought oh, unsafe to communicate it. And I just kind of dealt with it um, until finally you told me and I came out to you and mommy had an inkling, but you know our mother, she doesn't say anything. She just kind of leaves it up to us to bring it about. And just for context, um, Sammy and Alana are her best friends. They're oh, I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but speaking about when you told me, and I, I think it was because our mother, when you talked to her about it, she told you to talk to me, right? I think she had an inkling, and she told me that... Um, you were having similar issues, so to talk to you, but I don't think she herself pointed out to me that she that I had DID or that she knew that I had DID. But as you recall, when we did a group conversation, um, that she knew that on occasion, especially when we were younger, that it wasn't me. So maybe she didn't know it was DID, but maybe she knew it was some form of split personality. Okay. And when you, do you remember when you told me? And um, like, what kind of feelings and thoughts were you having when you decided to tell me? <laughs> so, um, I had mixedness of nervousness and um, being happy. Because it was like the feeling of, oh my God, I'm not alone. And I have somebody in the family that I can communicate with that is going to understand and not criticize or question it. And that was my biggest, biggest concern because 
with who how I am on top of you know with my learning disability and everything to deal with that and the fact of like one of my major problems is um not adapting well to change so to have a system and not you know handle change very well it's a it's problematic and so me embracing the fact or even considering that somebody else in my family could understand and not you know fight me on it and it's interesting because you telling me about your experience was what finally got me to accept what was going on with me because I had just been diagnosed when Nikki told me about what was going on now our mother knew because I had told her about it right when it happened because we're pagan and our mother is a priestess and so I went to her because just in case this was something spiritual that was happening um, so I wanted her thoughts and guidance on that um, which we eventually realized it wasn't quite spiritual it was I had DID and when Nikki told me about her experience the entire time I had been fighting with my therapist because I had been saying um, listen, like, I know my childhood wasn't great, but it wasn't bad enough for me to have DID. Like, my trauma wasn't bad enough for this. And that was the thing that I kept fighting against because I was like, it doesn't make sense for me to have this. So when you told me that you also had it, I had to then accept the fact that, yeah, our childhood was bad enough for us to form this. For both of us to have it, it meant that I had to face the fact that, like, okay, maybe... Um, what we had gone through um, was bad enough. So for you, you had already had all this time to adjust to the idea that you had these other personalities. Whereas for me, this was brand new. And so for you, it was kind of like such a relief that somebody else knows and somebody in the family knows. Yes. And for me, it was like, oh my gosh, somebody else in the family has this too. So it's it's funny how that was a different experience for us. I, yeah, I, I feel that if you had known around the time that I had known, you probably would have realized that that moment in time that I was very suicidal wasn't me. Um, and so... <laughs> And, you know, and learning that, like, I, I guess, like, people who got the information, like Eric and, and Mommy, and learning that Zena, which is one of my others, um, that was a misunderstanding on her end. She is trying to protect to me, like everybody else in the system. It's just that because of what she went through, she, um, she was protecting me in the way that she thought was best, which is how she went, and it wasn't the best way to go. You've, you've mentioned, you've mentioned Nikki, you've mentioned Nancy, you've mentioned Zena. Um, how many alters do you know of in your system right now? So, not counting myself, obviously, there is six. Okay. Do you want to name them? So, obviously, I have Nancy, who is actually in charge of the system. Um, and then you have... Nikki, who is rebellious and very risky. I mean, I'm risky to a point, but she's jump out of a moving vehicle on a freeway type uh, um, party animal type person. Um, Zena, who was um, suicidal. Um, so she's a very dangerous alter. Um, and then my youngest ones are... Cynthia, who's about 10, you know, she's 10, um, and I guess you could say she's the one that's been around the longest, um, that I know of, and, uh, thanks to Nancy, who spilled me in on everything. Nancy, since she's in charge of the system, she pretty much has everything intact for me, um, anything she finds out now that I'm able to communicate with her, she actually tells me. Um, and then I have one male. His name is Mike. Well, Mikey, but he likes to be called Mike. Um, and he's 
he's 15. And even though he's 15, you could say kind of acts a little childish. <laughs> he really loves chocolate milk. Um, and then there is a fairy named Mel. Um, and she recently made herself known to us. And that's, yeah. And um, it's interesting because, and of course this is where you are right now because like you said, you've only just been able to start communicating with your system. Yes, Whereas, well, one of them. Right. So for me, it's because I was communicating with them thinking they were imaginary friends, the, that avenue of communication was already open. And there was a moment in my um, treatment that that got blocked off because I had said to my therapist, I said, well, if I can communicate with them the same way I was communicating with them before, that means I'm faking it because before I thought they were imaginary friends. It doesn't make sense. My therapist was like, I don't even know how to argue with you against that because it doesn't make any sense. Um, once I got over that, then our communication is a lot more open. It's not great, it's not perfect, but um, we do have a bit more communication amongst each other. My system is larger. We are over 25 now, I think, and that's only the ones that I know about. I know that there's alters, that I know of their existence, but I don't know much about them. And then I also know that there are things about the system that I am not allowed to know yet. So I can't even begin to think what our total actually is. But as far as the ones that I know were over 20, so I'm not gonna sit here and name everybody because we'll be here <laughs> for a while. Um, but I will say that um, a couple of times that our alters have spoken to each other knowing that they were speaking to each mm -hmm. other. Um, Cameron, who is our primary protector, um, and I guess if you were to say somebody was in charge of the system, it would be Cameron. Um, so he and Nancy have spoken to talk about like system communication and organization and um, how to keep like, like just how to be able to work with everybody in the system. Um, Zena and Ariana have had a less pleasant exchange. <laughs> we won't talk about those. Um, where um, Zena triggered Ariana out, and Ariana is our physical protector, and she came out swords a blazing. Um, so, those are just a couple of times that um, our alters have knowingly spoken to each other. Um, now, an interesting thing is that when we've told each other about some of our alters, we've um, been able to say like, oh, actually I know yes. who they are. Yes. So for example, Xena, I didn't know it was Xena at the time, but I knew that um, I definitely dealt with Xena a lot. Um, looking back, I can see that I dealt During with her a lot. During the middle, my middle school days, yes. Um, sadly, <laughs> sadly. Um, just like you had your moments in high school where you like really can't. My middle school days were like sectioned. At the beginning it was me, then it was Nancy, then it was Nikki, and then it was Zena. So there was like no... Right. So like, you, so you're, you have like memories of middle school at the very beginning and then like nothing afterwards. Well, right. I had Nancy kind of like fill me in on some things. And then there were moments where I knew it was me that was doing it and kind of like probably along the way during that portion of time, um, it was me or I came like, you know, I came back briefly and then, um, you know, disappeared again. And now Nikki is the one that um, I very much remember. And I remember it was at the time that you just, you said you wanted to start being called Nikki and would not be called anything else. Um, and it was very much a very like angry phase. And I, I remember Nikki very well. And so when you told me about her, I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, obviously, I go by Nikki, too, but our personalities are, though they're similar, remember, like I said, she's more risky, more on edge, as she described, um, and she was very adamant on her spelling, so I'm very adamant about my spelling, because I don't want to get it mixed up, 
I'm very different from her. Um, and she's very adamant that her spelling is N-I-K-K-I-E, which is why my spelling is N-I-K-K-I, which, you know, so that it doesn't throw people off. So people who know about my system at the time, you know, if she's out, will be like, you're not you. What are you doing out? What's going on? So, so yeah. And, and so it's interesting to look back and be able to see like the times that I did interact with the other alters and i know like we had a conversation where i had mentioned britney yes and yes. you actually said that you remember hmm? britney from like i was in third grade when britney was um most active um and, and what are the things that like you remember about that um well first off i could tell the difference right away from which one is my sister and which one's not <laughs> um, uh I'm going to say this and, and respectfully. <laughs> um, we have a great bond, obviously. Um, but what I noticed was you are very, um, how do I put this? Okay, don't bug me when I'm not wanting to be bugged. Where Brittany, on the other hand, is like, oh, no, it's, it's okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Join us. Or, you, you know, it's like. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I hit you? Did I hurt you? Um, when it was time to clean, you were automatically like, okay, well, you clean the floor. Well, I didn't make the mess. I don't care if you didn't make the mess. I want you to clean. I don't want to clean. And then Brittany would be like, oh, let me help you clean up. So, like, it was just like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. We're doing this. <laughs> that must have been really confusing for you, though. Honestly, yes, especially since at that moment in time, I didn't even know about myself. Right. Well, you were like, what, five, six? Okay, so switching gears a, a bit, um, how do you get along with your other alters? Um, like I said, I only really communicate with Nancy, um, and I get along fine with her, actually. Um, what I heard is that... Um, the younger ones are afraid to approach me, um, so they don't, but they still at the same time protect me. And um, Zena, well, I, I, I would rather even stay away from her anyway. Um, and Nikki, well, from what I get told by everybody, I don't particularly care for Nikki, which nobody cares for Nikki. So... <laughs> Um, but, and, and Mel's the most recent one. I wouldn't mind probably if I could, like if I could choose to, I wouldn't mind interacting with Mike and Cynthia and Mel. Um, not too crazy about Nikki. <laughs> um, we probably would butt heads, not gonna lie. Um, and Zena, well, I appreciate her being protective of me. I just feel like having gone down the road with her that I had to go down and not fully remember everything and just have like those bits of pieces like I'd rather not so it sounds like there's like some trust issues with Nikki and Zena definitely yeah. definitely um trust issues because I'm not there I don't remember everything and I have to be relied upon what's going on and so it's like the fear of oh my god what could have happened while they were out especially Zena. Mm -hmm. yeah and i can understand that i don't think um i have a relationship that's quite that tumultuous with anybody um but like we definitely do have different um relationships between the alters in our system like for example cameron's my best friend cameron has been my best friend since high school um, and so like we, we've had arguments and he hasn't always agreed with the decisions that I've made. Um, but he is always 100% there for me. Um, there is a little bit of like irritation in the system because they, um, tend to say that Cameron <coughs> will take my side over anybody else's. Um, that is kind of his role as the primary protector. Um, he is like my primary protector versus, um, like Stefan would be Angel's protector. 
So, so Stefan would be more likely to take Angel's side on things. Um, Ariana and I don't get along. Um, <laughs> Ariana does not like me, <laughs> but, um, she, the only thing I ever have to be worried about with Ariana when she's out is if she's going to like say the wrong thing to somebody because she can be very defensive and, um, doesn't have a lot of patience. And if she thinks that somebody is coming for us, then she is going to respond in kind. Um, and see a direction with you, Zena. <laughs> and may those two never meet again. <laughs> yeah, that was that was rough. Um, luckily, when that happened, our mother was there to um, mediate the situation. And Eric too. <laughs> <laughs> but um, now, Ricky, Ricky, and I have a complicated relationship. Um, I try very hard to be very understanding of him. We've come a long way from when he first shouted at me. Um, and with him, I have to worry about like if he doesn't front very often, but if he does front, I have to worry about whether I'm still going to have to have friends after he comes out because, um, he doesn't hold anything back and he doesn't care about other people's feelings. And so sometimes he will, um, say things that I would not necessarily say. And so, um, sometimes I have to patch things up with friends after the fact. Um, the one person that I probably wouldn't trust to front would be the dark lady. Um, but that is because of nothing that she would do to other people, but things that she would do to me. Um, because her, she's our main persecutor. Her entire role is to, um, cause me problems. But for the most part, um, everyone in the system, I can at least trust to go about our life, continue to do the things that we need to do, go to work, take care of our son. So I can trust everybody to that extent. I just don't necessarily trust them with how they interact with the people around us. That would be the same for um, our system with our daughter. Um, you know, I will trust Nancy with my life and she does great with Holly. Um, and it's just like, obviously our daughter is four. So my system is learning along with me how to handle her. Um, she doesn't fully know about the system, but she kind of has an idea when it's really mommy and when it's kind of off. Um, so when she gets older, We'll have that conversation with her. So, um, and you know, it, it is, it, it is hard. I won't lie. It's hard, um, raising a child with a system, but I wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah. It's, it comes with its challenges, but, um, luckily the one thing everybody is on the same page about is, um, protecting our son. So yeah, you get it. <laughs> um, now you've mentioned a lot about how, you get the blackouts and you don't um you don't know what's going on when you're yes. not out what is that amnesia like for you i've never been really good with describing things um but i would say that it, it it's hard because i'm having to play <coughs> fill in from other people <coughs> and just trust that that's exactly what happened like when our father tells me, oh yes, you met this person. Well, okay, I don't remember meeting this person. And then when he gives the time period, it's like, okay, I wasn't out during those times. <laughs> so that's nice because whoever was out met this person and this person assumes this person, you know, this right. alter is me. Um, so I just really hope that whoever it was, it was not a terrible encounter. Um, luckily, um, since Nancy is in charge of the system, um, she's been able to prune everybody into understanding how, and, and it became a protective mechanism for us um, to act like me so that those who don't know won't go like, what's going on here or whatever. Um, so the problem with the amnesia though, is if, if I'm not being 
filled in by somebody else. I don't know. And for the longest time, like the system just recently started doing the check-in, check-out list um, and started writing down like what was going on, especially like the in, very important things down. So that way, when I came back out, I would have the answers written down. And it's interesting because for us, we don't get like the full blackouts. We get what I call gray outs, um, where if like if we were to switch right now, whoever came out would be able to continue the conversation. They would know what's going on. They would know why you're here. They would know like to continue to look at our notes um, to go through this conversation and they'd be able to pick up from there. Um, but if you then came to me a week later, I wouldn't necessarily know what happened while that other person was out. So the immediate memory transfers over but the as we get away from the situation then I start to lose um, specifics and I'm like I'll know like for example if I wasn't fronting right now um, like a week from now I'll know that we did this and I'll know we had this conversation but I won't remember what we talked about um, and so speaking of how often do you switch um, honestly it's been actually more stable lately I, it's kind of funny after I started talking to David um, it I started to switch less Nancy's come out a couple times not enough to record like probably five minutes and she gets along fine with David David loves her um, but before with all the stress of everything going on it was switch after switch after switch like you even noticed that Holly's party apparently I was there I was gone and then it was Mike and then what, Nancy? Yeah. So <laughs> that's just an idea of how quick it could come. Um, having though, knowing that I have the DID, it kind of actually helps me feel, feel a little bit better. And also because there were moments, like I told you, since I, I, I black out and everything, it also could also explain like the moods because I'll be fine. And then sometimes I won't be fine like two days later or whatever. So, and then sometimes I will remember what happened those two days before. So, um, but yeah. So like now that you're more stable, what does stable look like? Um, well, for one, I'm not having, like, I don't, I feel like it helps a little bit with anxiety and the depression, um, because I know that it's me. Um, and if it isn't, it's only Nancy and it's briefly, um, which I'd rather be Nancy than anybody else, honestly. Um, and I feel like I can do a little bit more um, than before, um, you know, and to be in a place where I can actually have memories of what's going on and not years of my life cut in half mm -hmm. um you know because it, it, it kills me to know i'm 34 but i don't remember all of my 34 years of life and that's the hard part that's the hardest part because it's like you don't get those back mm -hmm. yeah and um the same like there's definitely like my memory of our childhood is very much in chunks like there's things I remember there's things I don't remember um I know that for us we switch a lot more than you do um I know like I remember that you, I used to think that we didn't switch a lot I just didn't realize that we were switching because like what'll happen is I leave lead a very unexciting life so like somebody could come out for two hours and all they do is watch tv so that when I switch out again, it's not going to register that there was a switch because there was nothing to bring attention to that fact. And it'll just be like, I may not remember those two hours, but because we were just watching TV, I don't realize that I don't remember it. Um, so it it is interesting. We, we switch multiple times throughout the day. There may be a couple of days where I'll go without switching at all. Um, but it's never more than a couple of days. Um, so it's, 
I think that may be why perhaps that we have the gray outs instead of the blackouts because if we were switching as often as we do and we're having blackouts with that like we wouldn't we wouldn't be able to function um yeah uh, I barely function when I have my blackouts so it'd be like yeah and so um it's it's just it's interesting how different our systems are from each other like we grew we grew up with the same childhood um but the way that our brains reacted to that which i was different. actually told by my therapist that could be because of our age difference mm. and what we had to go through because when <coughs> our mother left it was raising us mm -hmm. um and because you're the oldest and then you have me who i'm i'm the complete like i'm literally the youngest and you had an understanding and a grasp of things i didn't mm -hmm. um and so that may be why you get gray, also why you get gray areas and I get all the black areas because the biggest part of our childhood that I remember that I can never ever forget is seeing our mother's back go out the door and just expecting her to come back and eventually at a point you couldn't bear to see me as I was and you had to break it to me like, and, it, and even after you broke it to me, it took me a couple days for me to realize she wasn't coming back. Mm -hmm. And when I mean like, like obviously she, she's in our lives, but I mean like when I, when I mean coming back, I, they, they were never, we weren't going to be a whole family anymore, ever. And, and, and the interesting thing about that is I don't have any memory of that at all. None. Like I don't remember that day at all. And I can never forget that day. So it's, it's interesting. Um, like a little bit related to that i guess is like we've talked a bit about how it affects like how our past affects us um how does did impact your everyday life um sometimes it actually does make it hard because it's like if i'm not there and then thing like something happens and then i come back and i don't know what's going on and i'm not with somebody who I trust, who knows exactly what's going on with me to be able to fill and understand to be able to fill me in. Like, for example, my birthday, you were gone when I came back. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, um, so it, it, it just it cuts things off. I can't function. I can't remember certain things. And I just have to rely upon others. Mm -hmm. And when you have, like, when others are out and you're not, do they have different skills than you do? Um, they have different CDs, for sure. Um, I can clean. I don't mind cleaning, but I mostly stress clean, whereas if Nancy's out, so you got about dishes, she could be over there doing the dishes right now. Yeah. And and I, I don't clean well. I am not good at cleaning. <laughs> I blame the ADHD. But um, Veronica and Mary and now Cassidy um, will pick up a lot of the, the housework. Um, but for, I won't go into do too much detail about how it affects us every day because it's what our whole channel is about. Um, but yeah, it can be difficult um, when you're switching to, it's hard to have a consistent yes. view of things. Yes. Um, so before we wrap it up, how does it make you feel to know that you have a sister with DID? Um, to alliterate what I said earlier, I'm happy about it because I have somebody that I can talk to and call if needed. Um, also a getaway because, you know, I need a getaway to, 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 to just be able to unwind, especially if I am having an episode, I have not just one but two places where i can um unwind and possibly just kind of chill until i'm back um and then head home and you know for me it's i am glad because you're the only person in real life that i know that is a system and so it's helpful to have somebody that you know understands some of the things that we go through um, it does make me sad um, that because I that know we both have to go through it. Yeah, and I know yeah. how DID forms, and so as your older sister, it it's hard because I'm you know I 
I feel like I wish I could have protected you more so that you didn't have to develop DID. And I, I think in retrospect, even if I am the younger sister, I, I feel the same way, especially after knowing I've had it for so long and then just learning that you have it. Yeah, it's great to know I'm not alone, but then it's like, just like you, I'm like, I wish we both didn't have to go through it, but. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that kind of like really sums up what it's like to have DID is um, like, you know, you have the way that you feel about how it affects your day to day life. And, you know, you come to certain different levels of acceptance of having the disorder. But at the root of it, it means that you went through something significant when you were a child. And no matter how much you can love and appreciate your system, there's still the knowledge that something bad had to happen for the system to form. And so it can it's not something that you necessarily think of every day, but there's always going to be that sorrow for what could have been. Yeah. Um, so I'm so glad that you agreed to do this. <laughs> <laughs> She's been waiting a long time for me to agree to do this. Um, my system was just finally on agreement to do it and thought that actually would be best for me to, to um, come out and, and talk about it. Um, and to, you know, just so that in the future, hopefully, um, be able to do more, um, videos either with you or just, you know, feel comfortable being in front of camera. Cause this is not what I typically, um, do. Like I, I, I'm kind of like a mixture of extrovert and introvert. So it's, and yeah. so is a good portion of my system. So, yeah. Well, I'm glad that you guys agreed to do it. And. Um, if you guys have any questions for us, if you have questions um, about some of the things that Nikki said, or, or if you have questions about um, just being siblings with DID, please let us know in the comments and maybe we'll do a part two to this. I would not mind. Thanks everybody. And until next time, take care and stay well.